is an airy and sunny town about 24 kilometers to the south of downtown Cairo 85 meters above sea level and 40 meters above common Cairo ground the location is well chosen due however to nature more than the choice of man about 5,000 years ago at Isbet al Walda a few kilometers north of Helwan from July 8 1942 to 1954 the Helwanese archaeologist Professor Saad Yusuf Zaki has noticed that the local farmers kept in their houses true pieces of great antiquity and had excavations made. In those years, a great number of tombs, more than 10,000, were discovered, some of them small and some big, some belonging to princes and dignitaries and others to ordinary people, all of them being dug during the first and second dynasty. In 1997, an Australian mission headed by Dr. Christiana Köhler, Master of Arts in Egyptology and head of the Australian team of archaeologists, re-excavated the previously discovered tombs and stumbled upon almost 6,000 objects and more than 150 new graves dating from between the 1st and 4th dynasties. Dr. Köhler said, It is a duty to protect this magnificent archaeological site from the urban expansion which represents major threats to Helwan's monuments. At a distance of 11 kilometers, on the east bank south of Helwan, in a valley called Wadi Garawi, are the remains of what is considered to have been the first dam in the whole world. The construction is peculiar, as it has been built in steps similar to the pyramids. The dam was intended to provide water for the workers excavating the stones, more especially those who were excavating stones difficult to find in large blocks, that is, the alabaster. It was discovered in 1885 by the German scholar George Schweinfurth. In 1983, research work was conducted in the place of the dam by the German University of Braunschweig. الدين و ولا سن ميتين لا اسن صايد الناس كان لازم يعمل 8 كيلومتر عشان بياخذ ميه اسن الناس المصريين وقت ده بيقولوا مكان نعمله 8 كيلومتر نقفل الوادي وادي قراوي ده في الوادي ده كان يجي ميه من 40 وادي ثاني 40 كيلومتر يعني كل كذا وقت في معتره ولما كمل يمكن 600 الف متر مكعب ميه كان عنده ميه في المكان ودي حاجة مهمة خالص ولكن لما الماء يجي بالمعترة ينزل بسرعة ويسد السد عشان كده شوف الفراعنة قبل مسار كم كيلو عملوا السد الثاني بالحجرة ان الماء يكبت عليه كده ينزل في الحوض بسويس بسويس ويتنظف كمان يعني حاجة جميلة From the ancient Egyptian pharaonic age to make a long jump of many centuries in order to see Helwan inhabited again. Abdelaziz bin Marwan, who reigned in Egypt for 20 years, from 685 to 705 AD, came to live in Helwan when the plague broke out at Fustad near Old Cairo. He built mosques and palaces and planted date trees. The death of Abdul Aziz bin Marwan frustrated his intention of making Helwan the capital of Egypt instead of Cairo. The devious Marwan gave orders. 
orders to Dr. Ryle to build the sulfurous bath in the year 1873 and to plan the city using modern criteria. Many princes, pashas and other important personalities of Cairo were invited to build villas in Helwan. The Khdevi gave them the favorable conditions to build and stone was delivered to the site for free. When Tawfiq Basha became Khedivi, exactly on the 26th of June 1879, he took his special interest in Helwan and built a palace. He was interested himself in the developing of the palace as a first-class health resort. During his reign, the greater part of Helwan as it exists today was built up. also built a mosque. He died in his palace at Helwan on January 7th, 1892. With his death, Helwan suffered a great setback in its development. Had he lived longer, he would no doubt have reaped the benefit of his foresight and made Helwan probably one of the best known watering places in the world. The Hiwan Observatory was constructed on limestone plateau in 1903. At that time, Hiwan was a little village of about 5,000 inhabitants only. Astronomical observations at Hiwan started in 1903 using a 30-inch reflecting telescope. Hiwan Observatory gained international fame and attracted many foreign scientists to conduct meteorological and joint scientific studies in these areas. The institute has a variety of activities in different fields. The National Research Institute of Astronomy and Geophysics, uh, which is the old name Helwan Observatory, it is one of the oldest institutions uh, in the Middle East and Africa. It is established in 1903. The, it works in two main major fields. The first one is astronomy and the second one is geophysics. In geophysics, we, uh, the, the most important one is to uh, carry out uh, seismicity monitoring all over the country and for the other surrounding regions. So we have uh, seismic uh, network stations to uh, study the seismic activity uh, in the country. The Japanese garden was established in 1917 by Zulfaqar Basha, a resident of Helwan, as a present to Sultan Hussein. Landscaped in an Asian style, the garden included many Buddha statues and mythical animals. The Japanese garden is a representation of nature. The purpose of this garden is to capture nature in the utmost natural way and to do it with a touch of artistic feeling. The Japanese garden has an ancient history influenced by Buddha. The Buddhist influence makes the garden a quiet place, allowing people to look back and reflect upon themselves or meditate. <laughs> 